Drawing a dog is way easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello beautiful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. So we have a whole lot of really fun things ahead of us in this video, including a small giveaway, which I'm going to tell you about a little bit later, because for now we're just going to start with the sketch. For references, these are the dimensions that I'm using. This is just for demo, so there's no real reason behind it. And if you're wondering, you know, which canvas size to use for your own creation, I have a video that explains it all. I will link it in the description below so you can find it and watch it if you're new to digital art. We're also going to create a new layer. We're going to rename it to sketch, and then we're going to pick a color we want to use for sketching. I like to go with just a simple gray. Now, in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate, and the other brush is a brush that you would use to get maybe more professional results, save some time, and just overall get illustrations on the next level. But these are optional, they are the brushes from my Big Brush Bundle, which will be linked in the description below, along with a special promo code for the YouTube people, as usual. So for the sketch, honestly, the brush doesn't really matter that much. You can either use the HP pencil that comes from the sketching panel in Procreate, or if you have my illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the sketching brush, of course. And for this video, if you have a dog, I really recommend that you take a picture and keep it on your phone next to you or on your computer or whatever. Or if you even have a dog in your room, get your dog next to you so you can have a reference. I don't have a dog, so I went ahead on Instagram and asked you guys to send me pictures of your dogs and... Wow, <laughs> that was the best two days of my life. I would just get a bunch of pictures in my Instagram inbox of the cutest dogs ever. Uh, I couldn't just pick one, so I grabbed a few to get inspiration, namely Mike and Poggy, Poggy, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. And I'm probably going to be doing this picture thing again. So if you want to be part of the next poll for your animal pictures, make sure to follow me on Instagram. The link will be in the description below, of course. And we're going to start by sketching just the general shape of the dog's body, which is going to really depend on the breed. So it might be a rectangle, it might be a triangle in two different directions. So make sure to look closely at your dog and try to pick the best shape. And here, since I'm not going for a specific breed, I'm just going to draw an egg shape for the body. Same thing with the head, you could go with a square, a triangle, so many different shapes depending on the breed. Here I'm just going to go with a circle and then we're going to refine it a little bit later in the process. You can then go in and draw two slightly curved lines in the bottom part of the body, which is going to be the hind legs. And you can then mark a horizontal line very roughly on which you're going to place the feet. So for the feet, think of it as two rounded triangles. And I really encourage you in the sketch to be really loose and quick. So don't worry if you have a bunch of lines, if it looks a little bit weird, we're going to refine it later and we're not even going to see the sketch in the final product. That being said, once you have a rough shape for the hind legs, just go ahead and draw four little vertical lines that are going to become the front legs. So you can see, still super simple, the front legs, the thickness of them is going to depend on the breed and also kind of the angle of them. Here again, I'm just going with something very simple, not a specific breed, so just vertical lines with medium thickness for the legs is going to work. And at any point, if you need to resize or move your sketch in the canvas, you can use the arrow tool located at the top so that you can have enough room, for example, to draw the ears because I personally did not have enough room for them. And at this point, we're going to zoom in on the face and add a few features and kind of refine the shape a little bit. So I want my dog to have a thicker jaw without it being too boxy. So make sure that you look at your dog and see what the, the jaw looks like and as well as the top of the head. So this is the shape that I'm going for. And probably one of the best occasions that you have to personalize your dogs is in the ear. So you can have a floppy ear kind of like this, but I'm going to be going with a more pointy triangular ear that is fairly big because this is what I like and if you want to make your dog look a little bit curious and a little bit more young as well maybe more like a puppy you might want to have one ear kind of folded so for that I like to just draw a line somewhere at the top and imagine that this top part is basically falling so that's going to be really cute in the end obviously it depends on the breed of your dog but I quite like it 
The tail is also another opportunity you have to personalize your dog quite a lot. You could have a tail that is up, a tail that is thin and down. This looks a little bit more like a cat. But here I'm gonna go with a tail that kind of flops or folds in the front of the dog and it's fairly fluffy and thick. But seriously, in this tutorial, at any point, if there's something that you see and you're thinking, hmm, I wanna draw this differently because I want it to look like a different breed of dog, please go ahead. That is what this tutorial is for. It's a base, it is not a rule book. Uh, it's just there to help you, but seriously, if you want to do something different, do it, experiment. That being said, once you're ready, go ahead and add the eyes on the face. I like to have them be pretty big and pretty much almost circles. And I quite like to draw a horizontal line that kind of cuts the eyes in two, <laughs> which kind of sounds strange. And then I draw my nose right below that. And for the nose, I like to go with a very thick rectangle. You're then going to draw a tiny little vertical line and then we're gonna move on to the mouth. So for the mouth, just start with a slightly curved W shape like this. You might want to emphasize the corners of the mouth. And then you're going to add a U shape to create the opening of the mouth. I say U shape, but I kind of like to have the bottom be really horizontal and not curved, but you could have just a straight U. And then you can draw a tongue inside because it just makes it so much cuter and so much more like a dog. You can also go ahead and add some really simple little eyebrows, depending on the breed, of course. Sometimes it adds a little bit more expression, but again, that is totally optional. And at this point, we're gonna go in and start refining the sketch a little bit without making it perfect, because again, that's not what we're looking for. But I like to add some irises just to have a better idea of how the dog is going to feel, where it's going to be looking at. So here I'm just drawing two circles kind of pretty much in the middle of the eyes, but you could have them somewhere else depending on which direction your dog is looking at. Looking in? Looking at. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so at this point you should have a really rough sketch. We don't need anything more precise than this. If there is any feature that is specific to your dog, this is the time to add it. So for example here, I'm going to just sketch a quick little bandana, but you could have a collar, you could have uh, pet clothes, whatever is specific to your dog, go ahead and add it here and we're going to move on to the colors next. So if you're not quite ready, feel free to pause the video here and we will meet at the next step. So first thing first, let's adjust the sketch so that we can see what we're doing properly with the color. For that, I like to change the blending mode to multiply so that we kind of see the lines better on darker colors. And then I'll lower the opacity until we can just barely see the sketch. Feel free to do something else if you're used to coloring, but that's the method that I use. And then you're going to create a new layer, put it below the sketch, and you're going to rename this layer to base. So we're going to be drawing the colors on separate layers to have some texture. This base layer, we're going to pick a color that is slightly darker than what we want our dog to be like in the end. So in my case, I'm just gonna go with, you know, an orange brown color. And for this, you want a solid brush. So you can either use the hard brush that comes in the airbrushing panel, making sure that the opacity is at 100%. If you're watching my watercolor videos, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, you can pick the base round brush from the Ultimate Illustration Bundle. And at this point, really, all you're going to do is outline the shape of your dog. So we want to have a solid silhouette. So nothing complicated here. Really, you just want to outline the dog and then we're gonna fill it in. Depending on the length of the fur, you might want to have an outline that is super smooth, so if you have really short fur, or a little bit more raggedy and rough if you have longer fur, kind of what I'm doing right here. But don't worry about drawing the actual individual hair strands. We're going to do that later in the process when we're drawing kind of the details and everything. For now, just focus on a general silhouette that has some texture in the outline if you do have longer fur, otherwise it's going to be, like I was saying, really smooth outlines. 
And once you have your silhouette, don't hesitate to go and tweak it a little bit, kind of reshape it either with the brush or the eraser because this base is really important. If you don't have a base that you like, it's going to be harder to get an illustration that you like at the end. So don't be afraid to spend a little bit more time on this silhouette because if it doesn't look right, it's going to be hard to make it look right. Again, like I was saying, late in the process. And the next step is going to be to add the texture. But before then, let's talk about the giveaway. So in this video, I'm kind of doing a test. I've never done a giveaway before, so I want to start with something fairly simple. But if you guys like it, I might do more in the future. And the prize is going to be the illustration bundle that I was telling you about. It's been a bestseller. People have really been enjoying it. So I want to give one away to someone watching this video. And there are a few rules to enter. It's free, obviously. And when I say rules, I mean, it's just like legal stuff just to make sure that you know i don't get sued because that would not be nice <laughs> but the way to enter is really simple if you've watched my video you know that at one point there's going to be a secret password on the screen so to enter the giveaway all you have to do is take the secret password and not only comment it on youtube but go ahead and comment it on instagram on the dog video post which is going to look a little bit like this, but don't worry, I'm going to link it everywhere, meaning in the description, in the annotations, and in the comments, so you don't have to look too far away to find it. And I will announce the winner on June 22nd, so just in a few days. And if you're watching this video kind of later in the future, after this giveaway is ended, don't worry, I'm probably going to be doing more in the future, so just make sure you subscribe on the channel so they can watch videos when they come out to make sure that you can enter the next time. And with that said, let's move on to the textures. So for the texture, I recommend you create a new layer, rename it to texture. <laughs> I know I'm super original with my layer names, huh? And this layer, we're gonna apply it as a clipping mask. So if you tap on it, you're gonna have the clipping mask option and you're gonna pick a lighter version of your base color. For the brush, you can either use the 6B pencil that is in the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration bundle, pick the basic texture. And because we have a clipping mask activated, everything we draw on this texture layer is going to stay within the base shape of the dog, so that is super helpful. We don't have to worry about, you know, staying within the lines. And all we are going to do here is filling the shape like this, but I have a little pro tip for you. Whenever you want to fill a shape, try to avoid doing it in zigzag motions like this. Try to train your wrist to do it in loops like this instead. Of course, the loops are going to be tighter, so you're not going to actually see the loops, but this motion is going to allow you to have a much more fluid movement, which is going to create just better texture coverage in general and it's also going to be better for your wrist especially if you draw a lot to do something a little bit more fluid as opposed to zigzaggy <laughs> so you can see it should not take too long but really practice that that's something that is going to make a big difference believe it or not in the final result if you do it with tight loops as opposed to tight zigzags and don't worry if your texture doesn't shine through really well that's, that's fine, and that's one of the reasons we created the texture and the base on separate layers. See, if you go and select the base layer, and then access the adjustment panel here at the top, click on hue, saturation, and brightness for the entire layer, you're going to be able to change this base color. So depending on how much contrast you want to have between your texture and your base color, you can play with the brightness, the saturation, and even maybe a little bit of the hue if you want to have, again, more contrast in your texture in your base. So experiment with that, there's no set rule here and you can also do it with the texture layer. So just selecting the texture layer and applying hue saturation and brightness to the entire thing. This time you might want to up the brightness a little bit, but seriously here experiment and you might end up finding colors that you are not expecting. And that's really cool. That's one great things about this technique is you can kind of experiment when your colors instead of needing to have a set color palette when you start, which can be hard sometimes times. And depending on your dog, you might want to create another layer above the texture layer and rename it to like cream or chocolate to add a little bit of color variation in your dog. Make sure that you remember to apply this layer as a clipping mask as well so that it stays within the base shape. And for my for my dog here, I'm just going to go like I was saying with a cream color to add a little bit of a like white um, on the belly and on some parts of the face. But this is another occasion you have to really personalize your dog to your dog <laughs> or to your favorite breed. So I'm gonna have a few examples here on the screen of other dog pictures that people sent me with some patterns that you can use. And 
yeah, experiment here. You could even have like polka dots on your dog or like stripes or anything. Seriously, um, take this layer as an opportunity to make your dog feel like your dog and to kind of do something maybe a little bit different from the tutorial. And since it is on a separate layer, you can also go back and use the trick that we just did to change the color of the base and the texture. So just going back in the hue, saturation, brightness in the adjustment. I'm not going to do it because I'm happy with my cream color, but that is always something that you have available to you when you create your colors on separate layers. Speaking of which, I'm going to add a little bit more color variation to my dog. So creating a new layer, renaming it to chocolate, applying it as a clipping mask and picking a darker version of my brown. And here I'm just going to, again, add more color variation with the same brush and the same um, tight swirls, spiral loops, <laughs> tight loops technique as before. And we're not only adding more color variation to our dog, which is going to make the fur look more interesting, we're also building the texture. So every time we add a layer with this texture brush, it has more grit and just interesting things to look at on our character. But be careful, here I'm not drawing shadows. This is going to be something we do later. We're gonna shade the entire dog for now. I'm just adding color variation. Now I highly recommend you do the same. So at least one more layer on top of the base and texture with a secondary color. Once you have that, we're going to move on to adding some features so that our dog looks like a dog. <laughs> so we're going to start with the eyes. For that, go ahead and create a new layer above all the texture and the base you created. This one we're going to rename to eyes and it is not a clipping mask, it is just a normal layer. For the eyes, I like to use a slightly off white so that we can add a little bit more light in it later. If we were to go with straight up white, we would not be able to add light. So we're going to use the same brush that we used for the base. So either the base round brush from the illustration bundle or the hard brush from the airbrushing panel. Now you're just going to outline your eyes and then fill the circles in. And at this point, it might be helpful to go ahead and hide your sketch just to make sure that your eyes shape is good. Because just like for the base of the dog, if you're not happy with the shape, it's going to be harder to move on in the future. So make sure that you're happy with the shape. And if you're not, you can always use the selection tool, setting it to freehand to draw a selection around one of the eyes. And then use the arrow tool, setting it to distort. You can toggle the anchors, so the blue little circles, to change the shape of your eyes. And once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and create a new layer above your eyes layer, rename it to iris, and this one is going to be a clipping mask. So whatever we draw on this iris layer is going to stay within the eye shape right below. So for your iris, you can pick whichever color you like. I like to go with a almost <laughs> black brown color. And for the brush, you can either use the 6B pencil from the sketching panel or the outline brush from the illustration bundle. And the reason I'm not going with a full black is we're going to add some shadows later and if we were going with just like straight up black, we would not be able to make it any darker, obviously. So all you're doing here is you're just drawing the pupil or the iris, I'm not sure what we would call it, um, because it's just one color, basically we're not drawing both. Anyway, um, you're going to draw two circles with your color and the eyes. That's it. <laughs> and I like to go with a textured brush and not a round brush just so that it it looks a little bit more alive um, and has a little bit more grit in it but you could go with the same base round brush or hard brush if you don't want to have this slight drawing feel but i highly recommend that you do it otherwise your eyes are going to look really different from the rest of your dog which is super super textured obviously and one really cool thing about drawing the irises on a separate layer is that if you use your error tool you can then move them around in the eyeballs i guess so you can kind of tweak the direction your dog is looking in. So that's just a really <laughs> nice trick. We're then going to move on to adding the shadow I was telling you about. So create a new layer above the iris, rename it to shadow, and this one is also going to be a clipping mask. We're going to change the blending mode of this layer by clicking on the N and then selecting linear burn. We're also going to lower the opacity around, you know, 60% for now. We can always tweak it later. So for the shadow, I like to go with a gray that has a little bit of purple in it just to make it feel a little bit less dead than just pure gray. And you're simply going to add a shadow on the top left or right of the eyes of your dog, kind of like this, so in a diagonal. You might also want to go ahead and hide your sketch back again once more because <laughs> we're going to add the lights. So for that, create a new layer above the shadows, apply it as a clipping mask and rename it to lights. 
For the blending mode this time, we're going to use Add, which is a great blending mode to use for lights in general. It makes your color look like lights, but it's really intense. So lower the opacity for now around 80% and we're going to go back in and tweak it. So for this, I'm just going to use a pure white, but you can go with a yellow color and just drawing two little tiny little lights on your eyes to make your dog feel so much more alive. For the opacity, what I like to do is zoom in and play with the opacity just until I can start seeing the pupil or the iris kind of shine through in the light and then stop. So that way you get something super super bright but you do feel that it's not just pure white added on top of everything. The last thing we're going to do on the eyes is create a new layer, rename it to eye lines, I guess. <laughs> this one is not a clipping mask and we're just going to outline the eyes. So for that, just pick a dark color that is already on your dog or just eyeball it and make sure that it is fairly dark. So you might want to make it even darker manually. And you're just going to, like I was saying, outline the eye. And I quite like to not outline the entire eye, just kind of the outside part of it. So not a full circle, as you can see here, I leave kind of the bottom center open. So you can definitely experiment with that as well. And I highly recommend that if you make a mistake, undo instead of erasing. That way your outline is going to look way more fluid, way more natural and less like stiff. So that's a, just a pro tip in general. Undo instead of erase and try again. I also like to add two little lines kind of like this. I don't know how to describe it, so make sure you look at the video. I think it makes the eyes just kind of more anchored in the face. And at this point, I highly recommend you group your eye layers by just swiping them toward the right and then clicking group. You can then collapse your group by clicking on the arrow icon and you can also rename the entire group to eyes. That way your file is much more organized, but also if you use the arrow tool, you can move all the eyes layer together. And you can also use the selection tool, if I'm able to click on it, and just move one of the eyes. I'm struggling here, but believe me, you can do it. There you go. Okay. And as you might notice, when you're moving stuff around, your clipping mask will seemingly disappear. But when you exit this function, it is automatically going to show them again. So it just kind of is a preview type of deal. So don't worry. <laughs> okay. So at this point, we're ready to add the nose and the mouth, which is going to obviously help a lot. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the eyes. I like to draw them all on one layer. So rename it renaming it to nose and mouth something like that and it's just a regular layer so no clipping mask no opacity or blending mode changes and we're going to keep going with the same brush so either the 6b pencil or the outlines and we're just going to draw the nose so start with the kind of rough outline and then you can fill it in really quickly i like to have some little gaps in there it just looks really cute and then we're going to draw them out the same way that we sketched it so starting with the little vertical line and then drawing the rounded w so nothing complicated as you can see here and once you have your rounded w your nose your vertical line go ahead and kind of draw the bottom part of the mouth and then just go in and fill in the shape or the gap the space <laughs> above the tongue so something super simple like that you might also want to add a little line just below the mouth, so kind of not the chin, but it just makes the mouth again, kind of like the eyes feel more on the face as opposed to just floating on top of it. And then I like to go in with a darker version of my color and just kind of color in the bottom half of the nose. So that way your nose is going to look way less flat. And you can also go in with a much lighter version of your brown, so like almost well, I mean, still brown. I was going to say almost white, but no, like a cream. No, not cream. Sand color. There we go, like a beige. And just add some highlights on the top of your nose. You can also go back in with your dark brown and just kind of shade in the top of the mouth. You can barely see it here in the video, but just little details like that is going to make the features look way more interesting. And make sure that you don't forget the tongue, otherwise it's going to look super weird. So go in with a pink, not too bright, that has a little bit of gray in it, something like that. And then you can go in with a lighter version, your pink, kind of coral, honestly, and add a little bit of texture on, you know, the top part of the lips. So that way your mouth is just a little bit less flat. You can also go back in and pick the color you use for your eyes and draw two little teeth on the side of the mouth. It is optional, but it does make your dog look a little bit more like a dog that way. But make sure that you don't make them too intense, just small little dots. Um, I, I think they're cute. <laughs> 
And once you have your eyes, your nose, your mouth, it's time to start adding the details and the outlines on the dog. So for that, create a new layer above everything, rename it to details. This is also going to be a regular layer, so not a clipping mask, opacity 100%, everything just normal. And with the same dark brown that you use for the nose and the mouth, you're just going to go around your dog and add little strokes. So depending on the length of the fur, you might want to have just one super sleek <laughs> uh, stroke all around the dog if it's really short fur. If it's longer fur, this is a really good opportunity you have to show this fur. So without drawing all the individual strands, again, kind of having a more sketched outline is going to give the illusion of fur really quickly, really easily. So just go around your dog and add these little sketchy lines to add both the outlines but also the fur effect. And guys, if you've watched this part in the video, it is time for the secret password. So we've been doing this for a few weeks and it's just really fun because you guys know me, but I don't know you. So whenever you leave a comment, I get to see either your face, your username, even sometimes your name. And it's just so great to see the wonderful community that we've been building here on this channel. It also gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. So this week, the secret password is not just one word, it is actually your favorite dog breed. So just go ahead and in the comments below, comment your favorite dog breed. And if you want to enter the giveaway for the Ultimate Illustration Bundle, make sure that you do that both on YouTube and on Instagram. So again, just go ahead and comment your favorite dog breed and we'll keep going. So at this point, you should have pretty much your outline done and you can also add some little stray hairs kind of like you see above the eyes. I did just group with two or three little hair. That can be really cool. And once you're ready, I'm going to show you a trick to make it a little bit more dynamic and add color variation within the detail layer itself. So in the outlines, the way to do it, super simple. If you swipe your details layer with two fingers toward the right, it is going to activate alpha lock. You can also tap on the layer to activate it in the menu. But with alpha lock activated, everything we're going to draw on this layer now is going to stay within the shape or the color that was already there, so within the outlines. That way you can go in and change the color of the outline by just making it darker, for example, in the ears, on the top of the ear where the color was darker, <laughs> or making it lighter in the areas where the base color and the texture is lighter. So around the cheeks here, my outlines were just looking too intense. So I'm just going in with a lighter version of my brown and kind of blending them in a little bit more. So that's a trick that you can use whenever you're drawing outlines. I've really been enjoying it um, recently. It just kind of makes the outline feel a little bit less dark and like the bold cartoon black outline and more like a polished, integrated illustration if that makes any sense at all so you can add as many color variation as you want on this layer simply like i was saying by changing the color and then brushing over your outlines since we have alpha lock activated it is always going to stay within the base shape that you already created on this layer and before we move on to shading the dog we need to add the little details element in my case the bandana for that, I like to create a new layer above everything. I don't know what I'm calling it color because what I'm drawing is clearly a bandana, but anyway. So create a new layer, rename it to whatever other elements you might have on your dog. And we're gonna do the same technique. So picking either the base round brush or the hard brush from the airbrushing panel. And we're gonna start by simply mapping out the main shape. So here I'm just drawing the outline of my bandana. If you have a collar, it would be the outline of your collar. If your dog was wearing a shirt for some reason or boots or something like that, you would just be drawing the outline of that element and then just filling it in like we did for the base of the dog. And I'm gonna go a bit more quickly on these tests because like I was saying, it's exactly the same as for the dog. So once you have your base shape, go ahead and create a new layer above it, call it texture, apply it as a clipping mask again by just tapping on a layer and selecting clipping mask in the menu. And you're gonna pick a lighter version of your base color, going back to either the 6B pencil from the sketching panel or the basic brush from the illustration bundle. You're going to cover your shape with texture. Once more, you can go back to your base color and use hue saturation and brightness in the adjustment panel to make your texture shine through in a way that you like. You can also completely experiment with different color palettes here to find something that you like and matches with the fur of your dog really well. Because again, finding color palettes 
to start with can be a little bit tricky so this is a really nice way to just start drawing and then seeing what happens if you tweak it later and then seeing if you find a combination that you would not have thought of but that you actually really like in the end we're also going to create a new layer above the texture for the details so the outlines and everything rename it to details outlines whatever you want this one is not a clipping mask make sure to remember that and you're just going to pick a dark color that matches with the color or the clothes or the bandana whatever you're drawing going back to the outline brush or the 6b pencil and just outlining here we're not drawing first so it's probably going to be longer smoother strokes and just like for the eyes what i was telling you make sure that you don't draw strokes and then erase and redraw you're much better to undo you're going to get results that are more fluid and just look better in the end way less stiff and believe it or not usually it is just quicker to do it that way so what i mean is you draw and you undo and you draw until you get something that you like as opposed to drawing erasing the section drawing erasing a little section that usually takes longer and the result is not as good so that's definitely something you're probably going to have to practice but believe me it's going to make a big difference in your illustration over time and once you have all your like personalization element completed just like for the eyes swipe your layers toward the right create a new group and rename it according to whatever your personalized element is so in my case i don't know why i'm still calling it a collar it would be a bandana but anyway it <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> If you made it this far, congratulations! The hardest part is far behind us. All we have to do now is shading the dog, which is going to make it look way better. But it's also a fairly easy step, so it should be a piece of cake at this point. So go ahead and create a new layer above your texture and secondary color. Apply it as a clipping mask and rename it to shadows. Just like for the eyes, we're going to change the blending mode to linear burn. And this time we're going to put it the opacity around 40%, but we can always change it later. And again, same for like for the eyes, go ahead and pick a gray color that has a little bit of purple to it and either the basic texture brush from the illustration bundle or the 6B pencil in the sketching panel. Phew, that was a mouthful. <laughs> so here I'm going to pretend that the light is coming from the top right, which means these shadows are going to be mostly on the left side of the dog. If you're drawing your dog in a complete illustration, make sure that the shadows and the light match the actual situation your dog is in. But here, since it's just on a white background, we can pretend that the light comes from literally wherever we want. So I like to shade kind of the inside of the ears and then kind of the shadow that the bandana would be casting on the dog, one side of the face, and then most of the left side. So casting a shadow pretty much behind the legs the front legs i mean and then casting a shadow on the tail from the hind leg hopefully that makes sense <laughs> but basically whenever there's an element that is overlapping another so like a body part that is overlapping another you might want to add a little bit of shadow there just so that everything kind of pops a little bit more and looks more three-dimensional as opposed to just a really really flat dog so nothing super fancy here as you can see it takes just a little bit of time and you can then go in and change the opacity until you get something that you're happy with in terms of how your shadows are blending with the rest of your creation if you have a bandana or something you might also want to add shadows on that so creating a new layer above your texture layer creating it uh, renaming it to shadows applying it as a clipping mask changing the blending mode to linear burn lowering the opacity you know the drill by now and with the same brush and same color you might just want to add the shadows on that specific piece as well so nothing super complicated here but since it was on separate layers and separate group you need to do it separately <laughs> We're also going to add some lights, so for that, create a new layer above the shadows for your general dog, not just in the color, bandana, whatever. So new layer is also going to be a clipping mask, rename it to lights, and we're going to use the same wonderful blending mode that we used before, so add. Again, it is a very powerful effect, so low weight opacity around, you know, 50% and we're going to tweak it later. For the light, I recommend that you go with a very, 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 very pale yellow or orange color. And I like to just outline one side of the dog. So like we said here, I'm pretending that the light is coming from the top right, which means I'm just going to outline every like edges <laughs> of the dog that is either pointing towards the top or the right. Nothing complicated here. I'm not even going to do some blending. I'm basically, I'm pretending that the light is also coming from slightly behind the dog, 
which right now we can't really see that effect because it's on you know a white background but if it was on a colored or darker background it would really help the dog pop out and make it feel like it's the main character of your illustration so drawing lights like that kind of just outlining one side of the edges <laughs> is really a helpful way in making your characters pop in general um yeah <laughs> And don't forget to go and play with opacity until you get lights that blend in in a way that you like. And you probably see me coming by now. If you have a collar, a bandana, a top hat, whatever other element on your dog, make sure that you add the lights on that as well. So creating a new layer in that other element group, planning it as a clipping mask using the same blending mode and similar opacity. Just go ahead and add some lights, making sure that you're following roughly the same light source as the rest of your dog otherwise it's going to look really strange here i'm pretending that i have some folds on my bandana it is optional but it just makes it look a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more like fabric to add some little lines that kind of run through it and we're almost done but i have a few more pro tips for you that are going to really help bring this illustration to the next level the first one being to add a ground shadow so below your base layer like the lowest layer that you have is going to be this ground shadow. Just create a new one, rename it to ground shadow. <laughs> I keep repeating myself, I'm sorry guys. It's time for me to be done with this voiceover, I'm getting crazy. Um, yeah, ground shadow, and we're gonna use the same purplish gray that we use for the shadows, but this time the layer is just going to be a normal if you're drawing on the white. Otherwise, if you're drawing your dog in an actual background you're also going to change the blending mode of this layer to linear burn and you're just kind of sketching a shadow so that your dog doesn't look like it's floating in the middle of the air just something super simple like this i also like to add a layer above the lights uh, calling it extra color or something like that and this layer is just to help the dog blend in a little bit more so it is also going to be a clipping mask and the blending mode for this one is going to be soft light now the color is going to depend on your environment. Here I'm just going to use the same color as a bandana because the dog is on a white background. But if you were to draw, for example, your dog on grass or something like that, you would pick that color. Make sure it is a very, very bright color. And all you're going to do is kind of color, you can barely see it here, but you're going to add a little bit of that color towards all the surfaces that are pointing downwards or towards the side. So. I know that might not make a whole lot of sense, it is a bit more of an advanced technique, but basically all the edges of your dog, you can add this secondary color here, and you can see if I hide it, it just is very subtle, but it helps blending in with the rest of your illustration. So yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when it's on a white background like this, but if it is an environment like a forest or something like that, make sure that you use green or something that's going to help it blend in, it is going to make a big difference. The last thing I like to do is add some little freckles, or not really freckles, but create a new layer. Pick the main color you use for your dog and apply this layer as add. It should be above everything and the opacity you can set it around 40% or something like that. And you can use the freckles brush that comes in the illustration bundle. Otherwise, there's not really a brush that matches in, um, in Procreate in the free brushes, so you could draw them by hand, but you just want to add some little dots. It adds a little bit more texture and more life, more light in your dog, so it's just a final little touch that is obviously not essential, but I think is really cool and kind of brings the piece all together. And guys, if you enjoy drawing this dog, I highly recommend you click on this playlist here in which I teach you how to draw a bunch of other cute animals and cute characters. So just click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.